I thought it would be uh, interesting to talk a little bit about the famous Mini Moog. The Mini Moog was a, a fabulous musical instrument that was first sold in 1970. But there's an interesting history to it. it um, they started to work on the Mini Moog in 1968-69. The design work was done during a period when R.A. Moog Company, which is the name of the company originally, the R.A. Moog Company was going through some, uh, some financial problems and they needed the development of a new instrument. And one of uh, the engineers named Bill Hempseth worked on the design of what became the Mini Moog synthesizer. After a few changes, the Model D Mini Moog considered to be ready for production. And there was a little caution at the time. Um, it, it, uh, it was uh, decided that there would be about 100 of them built. And they built 100. And the instrument that, uh, that I'm playing today is Mini Moog number 94. Uh, that was uh, one of two instruments that Bob gave me at that time. And uh, I <laughs> decided, without realizing the future, to sell one of them right away. Because, I mean, at that time, I thought, who needs two Mini Moogs, you know? <laughs> so I sold my one Mini Moog and kept the other one. But the one that I kept is the same one that I've been playing and have consistently been playing ever since. Um, it is literally has only been repaired once in all the years that I've had it. The only major change that I had uh, done with this Mini Moog is, put in, is I put in somewhat more stable oscillators because the original Mini Moog Model D, the oscillators were tended to be unstable. They'd go out of tune. The original concept of the Moog synth was modular that it was made in modules, that each one did something, and you connected the modules with patch cords. Uh, the basic modules of the original synthesizer were oscillators that produced waves, waveforms, and, uh, which could be um, varied. And, uh, and they, uh, the next portion of the, there would be in a modular synthesizer would be a mixer so that the sound would go, you could combine oscillators and put those sounds into a mixer and combine them in different ways. The next important part of the original synthesizer was a portion called the envelope generator. Now the envelope generator allows you to create an attack on the tone and a decay on the tone. And I've told a million times the story of the envelope generator. I will tell it once more very quickly. And that is, uh, after we were working on the design, uh, the original instrument did not do that. It simply, when you played a note on the keyboard, it simply went on, but there was no attack. Then, uh, I, and I said to Bob, well, you need, there needs to be something called articulation on a musical instrument. And uh, he said, well, what would that be? I said, well, uh, on a trumpet, you attack a tone by going ta and it creates a certain kind of sound. And when you play a piano, the, the string is struck and it, it creates a particular sound called the attack. And then the tone d uh, dies away and uh, slowly fades. And Bob thought of that for literally 30 seconds. Uh, and he said to me, okay, I've got an idea. And he said, go across the street uh, and buy a, a doorbell, will you? And we were working on the original prototype. This was not even a finished anything at that time. And I did. I went to a hardware store and I spent 35 cents for a doorbell. And um, when I got back, Bob had already worked out a few ideas. 
and he wired the doorbell in so that when I pressed the key and pressed the doorbell at the same time, it would create an attack that could be controlled and a decay that can be controlled. So the concept of the original envelope generator was, was literally envisioned by Bob in 30 minutes. Now, when the Mini Moog was designed, Bob had already designed a filter, and it was not on the very first prototype instrument, but it was designed in about 1966, or patented around 66. And that was the first and most important patent that Bob Moog actually ever had because it created a very specific kind of sound, which became the sound of the Moog. Basically, what is the Mini Moog? What's the important difference between it? Well, first of all, that did have the new filter. Second of all, that it was able to replace patch cords, as you can see. Uh, it reduced the weight of the original instrument considerably because it was no longer a series of modules. It included something called a noise generator, which gave a lot of potential to sound. It allowed an external input from other devices that could go through the Minimoog. It built in an envelope generator specifically to be used with the filter. It added variable glide so that you could glide from one note to another in variable manners. And it added left hand pitch and modulation controllers, which allowed you, when you were playing a solo with your right hand, to do various things with the pitch and add different kinds of sound. These are all the elements that really were part of the Minimoog. What I'd like to do now is I'd like to play a piece of mine that I wrote back in actually 1972 when I was... Uh, <laughs> a kid <laughs> still having fun playing uh, jazz fusion uh, music. And I wrote this piece based on a telephone number. I actually had someone's telephone number. I won't go into it. But her phone number was 6814149 and translated that into musical tones by simply thinking of the key of C, and six is the sixth note of the C scale. So that turns that phone number into a series of pitches, which I'll play. Uh, when I play I Lost Your Number, I'll be playing it as a solo instrument. And the reason for that is that, as explained in other places on this particular CD, when Bob made the first modular instrument, he realized that it would be better to be a single line instrument rather than polyphonic at first. So I'm going to be playing a solo line, and the background of my song, Lost Your Number, is played by a band called Nail, and the person who actually worked on that and did that for me is Neil Alexander. <laughs> 